everyone for today's lesson. We are going to continue with angle pair relationships, but this time we are going to be proving relationships. So the first thing I want you guys to do whenever you are analyzing these proofs is I want you to ask yourself, how are the angles related? That is so important. How are the angles related? That's a question I want you to ask yourselves over and over and over again for every single line that you write in these proofs. How are the angles related? Are they vertical angles? Are they linear pair? Corresponding, alternate interior, alternate exterior. Always ask yourself, how are the angles related? Before you complete this lesson, please make sure that you have completed the um, angle pair relationships days nine and 10 vocab video lesson. This will help you to um, really understand some errors that students make whenever they're analyzing different problems, as well as um, language that you would see in proofs. So far we've talked about if you have parallel lines, then Special angle pair relationships will be congruent or supplementary, but sometimes you might be given that a special angle pair relationship is already congruent or already supplementary. And if that's the case, then you can automatically assume that those lines have to be parallel. Because the only way for that this statement to be true, like corresponding angles being congruent, or alternate interior or alternate exterior angles to be congruent, or in consecutive interior angles to be supplementary. The only way that is possible is if you have parallel lines. So that's where that then comes in. It just depends on what the proof is asking of you. So we're gonna go ahead and draw a picture to represent example one. It says we, want our, we are given that line P and line Q are parallel. So we're gonna go ahead and draw two parallel lines. We're gonna call one P and we're gonna call one Q and we're gonna mark it up with our little arrows to indicate that they are parallel. And then we wanna cut it by a transversal line and we are going to label our angles as follows. We're gonna label this angle right here, angle one. This angle is angle two. And this angle right here is angle three. So we are given that angle, I'm sorry, that P, line P and line Q are parallel to each other. The picture did not show, so that's why I'm marking it up. And we wanna prove that angle one is congruent to angle two. So do you guys notice if we analyze this picture, I can see that angle one and angle two will be congruent to each other because they're alternate interior angles, but I also see angle one being congruent to angle three because they are corresponding angles. I can see that angle three and angle two would be congruent because they are vertical angles. And we know that corresponding angles and vertical angles are congruent. So somehow we're gonna go about this in a really roundabout way um, to prove angle one and angle two are congruent to each other. So starting off from the very beginning, I'm gonna write P is parallel to Q and we write that because it is given. Now it reads angle one is congruent to angle three. And you wanna ask yourself, how are the angles related? Angle one and angle three are corresponding angles. So what came before was parallel lines. What comes next is corresponding angles are congruent. If you have parallel lines, then corresponding angles are congruent. And so I'm gonna mark that off. Next. We have, if two angles are vertical angles, then they are congruent. Remember, angle three and angle two, they were our vertical angles. So we're gonna say angle two is congruent to angle three. So now let's read what we have. Angle one is congruent to angle three. Angle two is congruent to angle three. 
So therefore, angle one is congruent to angle two. We remove the connection and leave our answer. Angle one and angle two have to be congruent, and that is the transitive property of congruence. Remember that it's property of congruence if we're dealing with a congruent symbol. A lot of times kids get confused about that. All right, let's go on to the next example. This one we wanna prove alternate exterior angles or the converse of the alternate exterior angles, which the converse is that if alternate exterior angles are congruent, then you have parallel lines. So let's go ahead and analyze our given. We are given angle two is congruent to angle seven. And we need to prove that um, we have parallel lines. So you could say that um, if you have exterior angles that are congruent, then that means you have parallel lines. But I think that they wanna go about it in a different way. So if you look at our, our spaces of what we have here, all of our blanks, we have too many blanks. So it just depends, sorry guys, it just depends on what you guys want to do. So there's a lot of approaches. So now it's saying if two angles are vertical angles, then they are congruent. Do you guys see congruent angles? Or sorry, vertical angles? Well, yeah, you could work with angle two and angle three being vertical or angle seven and angle six being vertical. It just depends on what you see. I think I'm gonna go with angle two and angle three being congruent. And so I'm gonna say angle two is congruent to angle three. And I'm gonna mark that off. I also forgot my given, of course. Angle two and angle three have to be congruent because they are vertical angles. And let's read this. We have angle two is congruent to angle seven and angle two is congruent to angle three. If I cover up what they have in common, I'm gonna work with the transitive property of congruence that says that angle seven and angle three are congruent to each other. So according to the statement I'm going to use, I'm gonna work with angle three is congruent to angle seven. So now, how are angle three and angle seven related? They are corresponding angles. And we know that corresponding angles are congruent to each other. So I'm gonna say if corresponding angles are congruent, then what comes next is parallel lines. Then we have parallel lines. We could have approached this in a different way, working with angle six, but notice that angle two and angle six are also corresponding angles. So just know that sometimes proofs have more than one way in order for you to prove that a statement is true. Let's go on to the next page. For example number three, we are given that angle or that X and Y are parallel. So let's go ahead and mark that up. X and Y are parallel to each other. So I'm gonna mark that. I'm also told that angle one is congruent to angle three. Now note, angle one and angle three, they are not along the same transversal. So we cannot say anything about angle one and angle three's relationship. But if we were to cover this up, so I'll zoom in. I talked about this um, in the vocab video, that in order for you to really analyze a relationship, those angles need to be along the same transversal. So maybe I can say that angle one and angle two are congruent to each other. Maybe I can say that angle three and angle two are congruent to each other. Maybe that's the approach, because I have parallel lines. And I know that if I have parallel lines, then alternate exterior angles are congruent to each other. So that's probably what I need to do. I need to talk about alternate exterior angles. And I know that alternate exterior angles, they are congruent to each other. And look at angle two and angle one. How are they related? Notice that question I keep asking. How are the angles related? That's what you always wanna ask yourself. How are they related? Angle two and angle one, they are corresponding angles. And we know that if corresponding angles are congruent, then we have parallel lines. And that's what we wanna show. We wanna prove that 
A and B have to be parallel to each other. All right, I think we have an idea of our plan. Let's start off with our given. So in our given, I have X is parallel to Y, and I have angle one is congruent to angle three, and we write this because it is given. Next, I have angle two and angle three being congruent, and remember, they had a special relationship. These two angles were alternate exterior angles. And what we were given before was parallel lines, and parallel lines led to congruent angles. So if you have parallel lines, then alternate exterior angles are congruent to each other. So that is, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that they all cut, cut off. If parallel lines, then alternate exterior angles are congruent. So I need to mark that up. Sorry about that, guys. And that's what goes here. So now I need to look at angle one and angle two. So let's read and think about how this happened. Angle one is congruent to angle three. Angle two is congruent to angle three. Angle one is congruent to angle two. The connection between these two angles is angle three. And if I remove that connection, I'm left with my statement. And that is an example of the transitive property of congruence. So now my last statement is always what I want to prove. A is parallel to B. And remember that they were corresponding angles. So you have to ask yourself, is the if-then statement if parallel lines and corresponding angles are congruent? Or should we use if corresponding angles are congruent, then you have parallel lines? Which one should you use? Well, that's a really good question. This is now where I'm giving you too many boxes. So you have to make a decision about what came before and what comes next. So what came before was the angles being congruent. What came next is parallel lines. So we are not going to work with this one. Instead, we're gonna work with if corresponding angles are congruent, then we have parallel lines. So it's all about what came before and what comes next. This box right here was extra. And I'm now giving you extra boxes because we've been working with proofs for a while now and I need to make sure that you understand what your, go what your, your logical st argument is for your proof. So now we're gonna get extras. All right, so depending on how you wanted to view this problem, you could have focused on like angle two and angle three first and then looked at angle one and angle two versus the focus of angle one and angle two. So we talked about this idea back up here when we were doing our planning. So that's what these represent. Just an opportunity for you to really focus on the plan of action before you write your proof. Here is our last proof for this lesson. And it reads, angle one and angle six are supplementary. So remember that supplementary means that the, they add to equal 180 degrees. So angle one and angle six, they are not congruent to each other. But somehow I need to prove that M and N are parallel. So what I'm going to use is I'm gonna to try to come up with a plan. If I know angle one and angle six are not equal to each other, that's fine and they're supplementary. Is angle one or angle six equal to something else? Well, I see vertical angles here. Vertical angles are congruent. And I also see that angle four and angle six, they are, uh, they are consecutive interior angles. So angle four and angle six, they add to equal 180 degrees. Because remember, consecutive interior angles are supplementary. So we know that if consecutive and interior angles are supplementary, then we will have parallel lines. 
All right, so let's, now that we have a little bit of a plan, let's go hop right into our proof. So angle one and angle six are supplementary and we write that because it is given. Next, I'm gonna say that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle six equals 180 degrees. So it's all about what came before and what's coming next. What came before was supplementary. What came next is they add to equal 180. So if two angles are supplementary, then they add to equal 180. That is going to be our if then statement. I'm sorry, excuse me. If two angles are sup, sorry. I'm gonna cross that one out. All right, next, we have angle one is congruent to angle four. How are angle one and angle four related? Well, they are vertical angles. And we know that vertical angles are congruent to each other. So if two angles are vertical angles, then they are congruent. Next. Okay, we have if two angles are congruent, then they are equal in measure. Well, the angles that we had being congruent was angle one and angle four. So I'm leaning towards the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle four. And the reason why that's so important is because we want to somehow connect angle four and six together using their measure. So that's why it's really important to get rid of the congruent symbol and change it to equality. So I have measure of angle one equals measure of angle four. And now look at this. If angle one and angle four are equal to each other and the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle six equals 180, I can replace the measure of angle one with the measure of angle four and put it right here in our next statement. The measure of angle four plus the measure of angle six equals 180 degrees. And that is using the substitution property of equality. They are equal to each other. And if two angles add to equal 180, then they are supplementary. That's what comes next. So if two angles, so I already have this one. If two angles add to 180, then they are supplementary. And now we are on the very end of our proof. And the end of our proof says M has to be parallel to N. And we know that because how are angle four and angle six related? Well, they were consecutive interior angles that ended up being supplementary because they added to equal 180. So we're gonna say if consecutive interior angles are supplementary, then you have to have, the only way that that is possible is if you have parallel lines. Then you have parallel lines. And that is the end of this proof as well as the end of this lesson. If you have any questions over anything I talked about in this lesson, please feel free to email me. Otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful day.